turn to page 394. Clues were left behind that suggested a mystery. And to many humans, a mystery is irresistible. Unless I am convinced by scripture and by plain reason, my conscience is captive to the word of God. Long I pondered my king's cryptic talk of victory. All we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given to us. I guess I have a lot of things to ponder. Hey y'all, welcome to Pondering the Pages with Pierce and Brent. Today we've got a very special guest, Mr. Brent Lovell. He's a longtime listener, first time caller. And a lot of you never seen him before, but you've heard his voice almost every single episode. So uh, if you, would you mind doing the... Hey y'all, welcome to the Pondering the Pages with Pierce and Brent. There it is, that's what it is. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. It's good to have you on here. Thank you for having me. Are you excited? Do you feel nervous at all? I, ah, I'm thankful. Yeah. I, I appreciate you asking me to do this. Yeah, absolutely. I was happy to have you on. Yeah, I appreciate it. We're looking, or I'm looking, I haven't told Kyle this yet, but I'm looking to get a, a third mic so that we can have people on more regularly. Yeah, I think that's a great idea, honestly, because if we're going to expand our listeners, yeah. you know, you can get some young people. Yeah. Well, it's good to have guests, too. It just kind of, I don't know, throws a mix in things, gets it kind of mixed up a little bit, some variety. Yeah. Keeps it interesting. <sighs> Probably keeps you guys more on your toes, too, if you're looking forward to someone else. You're going to come up with new content, things like that. Yeah. 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 So what, um, first time, long time listener, first time speaker. Yeah. All right. So, I know you guys always start out with dad jokes. Okay, okay so what, what you got? You got one for us. Yeah, I, I have a perfect one for you. Okay. You got it? So, I love dad jokes, but I don't have kids. Yeah. Which makes me a faux pas. A faux pas. That's good, yeah. <laughs> that's you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let, man, me that's let me do a couple, see if I can keep you from laughing. Okay, turn, do bring the mic that way a little bit and turn it. Other way. So come in towards this side. Now move the whole thing this way. Yeah. A little right more. Here. A little more. And now turn it to face the screen over there. There you go. Is that better? Yeah. So you, so it's not direct, oh, yeah. it's not directly in front of you, but it's still. There you go. It was restricting my vision. Yeah. All right. So I'm trying not to laugh? You're trying not to laugh. Okay, cool. Okay. Can I smile? <laughs> yeah, you can smile. Okay. Did you hear that laughing too loudly is illegal in Hawaii. They only permit aloha. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I hate my job. All I do is crush cans all day. It's so depressing. <laughs> Get it? Good, good. Oh, uh, all right. Here we go. I found a wooden a wooden shoe in my toilet. Mm. It was clogged. It's good. <laughs> that was good. I had to I'm, I'm the, I love those do not laugh challenges. Yeah. I like trying not to laugh. You're really good at those. I've, I've, every once in a while, a video will come up on my feed where it, it's a do not. It says try not to laugh, and I take it seriously every time. Yeah, I'm, I'm, that's why I asked if I can smile because sometimes <laughs> I'll try not to even smile because that'll lead to a laugh. Yeah, those are good. Those are funny to me. The ones yeah. Yeah, those were good. I, I heard a really good one yesterday. Well, this won't be out for a few weeks, so I'll go ahead and tell it. I was going to say okay. I wanted to save it for Kyle because it's a, it's a chiropractor dad joke. You can use it two weeks in a row. I could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, before I, I never really believed in chiropractors. Okay. But I went and got an adjustment, and now I stand corrected. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh -huh. good. I thought that was good. <laughs> that's good. Uh, so, <clears throat> yes, sir. 
Will there be sunsets in heaven? Oh, man. It was a few few weeks ago on Wednesday night. We were finishing up, and I was walking Grandma out to her car, and there's a beautiful sunset. Of course, when you walk out the church doors, you face west, and so if you walk out at the right time, you get the sunset. And I thought, man, that's beautiful. And the thought came through my mind, one day in eternity, we'll get to enjoy this forever. You know, it'll be great. But then I thought there's no... There's no sun in heaven, so is there going to be sunsets? I don't think so. No. But this morning, beautiful, beautiful morning. Yesterday, full day. Yeah. Cutting grass, weed eating, you know, you do all the things. And you come in, and as bad as you don't like waking up early, it's worth it. Yeah. Yeah, it is. The beauty of the fresh day. Right. And fresh cut grass. Mm -hmm. and. Knowing that that you were able to accomplish something, mm-hmm. you know, but um, as much as I enjoyed that this morning, a sunset on a beach or a great moment with your grandmother, mm-hmm. something like that, man, you just want to, you just want to bottle that up. Yeah. Hang on to it. But I spoke with my grandmother this week. Yeah. Great. Asking the same. Great yep, nan. Great nan, yeah. which you were. You're, you got to meet. Yeah, that was fun. That was really fun. I enjoyed Man, that. I, I have shared that yeah. that uh, interview video. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Pierce came out and helped us with an interview with my grandmother. She's 94 and been walking with the Lord 80 of them years, I believe. Mm-hmm. Something like that, 82. Anyways, so I get a lot of... I get a lot of opportunities to just bounce things off of her, yeah. you know, tap into that resource. Right. And uh, ask her the same thing. And she said, well, you know, Jesus will be our light in heaven. Mm-hmm. And um, I don't think there'll be a need for darkness. And that was interesting. I said, okay, well, let's back this up yeah. scripturally. Mm-hmm. And um, Revelation 22, 5. Okay. There shall be no night there. So, sword drill, there. sword drill. Dude, I turned to Revelation 21. Wow, There's there 22. you go. I, you're dead on it. And there will be no, and there will no longer be any need for night. There will no longer be any night. And they will not have a need of the light of a lamp or the, nor the light of the sun because the Lord God will illuminate them and they will reign forever and ever. So here's a here's a theory. Okay. The Lord God is going to illuminate us. All right. <clears throat> in Genesis, we have a picture of God comes down to walk with Adam and Eve in the cool of the day. So what if every day God walks to the end of the earth and we get a sunset? And then he comes back, sunrise. Or if he just does a lap. That would be... <laughs> <laughs> He's moving around yeah. <laughs> around the earth at 22,000 yeah. miles an hour. Uh, That's pretty cool. He I'll, could do it. Yeah. Yeah, he could. Mm-hmm. And it would be hard not to catch those. Yeah. Because you're going to want to be there when it gets there. Right. And you're going to want to be there, you know, to see him go. But does he ever leave, you know? No, he never Maybe leaves. out of sight. Yeah. That was one of the lessons that we were last night. And thankfully, our our boys like us to read to them before they go to bed. Mm-hmm. Um, and last night, one of the readings was about air. And it was object was air. And then the teaching was about God mm-hmm. is air like air. You can't see it. Yeah. But you need it. And it's there. And it's free. Mm-hmm. And... If you don't want to accept him or you don't want to accept the free gift, go ahead. Hold your breath. Yeah. Eventually, <laughs> if you're around, yeah. you're going to take him back in. Yeah. That's so, good. That's really good. Well, it, I didn't make that up. Well, hey, still. <laughs> still you know. Yeah. So <clears throat> the sun sets and the sun rises mm-hmm. will be the light from jesus right there we go yeah solve that one <laughs> good job man i like that oh man that's see i'm 
I'm a simpleton. So I'm like, nope, grandma said it, and here you go. And it's like, yeah. here comes Pierce with the logic. That's that's good, though, because, I mean, the fact that your grandma's still around and that you take the time to actually go talk to her and, Gosh, and, and not enough get that wisdom. Yeah, and I'm thankful, and, and I get convicted at times. It's like, just... 15 minutes man yeah. just stop in you know when you're busy with life and stuff but it's it's strange and 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 i'll tell you this this is something you know the older you get the more you pay attention you see things um as we age and as the older generation ages and brother billy did this and sister beachy your grandmother i've noticed that you know, people be like, oh, man, they're slipping a little bit. And I'll just use mm -hmm. my grandma, for, exa for example, is, hey, her memory is off. But it seems like in her case and in life with her, she answers in Scripture. Yeah. And she is she has been one of the ladies that on a Sunday night, like she holds service. Like you go through the early, early stuff of your service and then – the subject of this church service is her reciting a book that she has memorized. A book of the Bible. A book of the Bible. Like an entire book. Wow. She hands her Bible off as she walks up and she starts off with, here we go. And she would recite yeah. an entire book. Man. And then it took long enough, depending on what book it was, then that was the end of the service, and then we would have a testimony and be Man. out. It was so for her having conversations basically is her reciting the Bible for the most part. Mm -hmm. And that's the quickness of it. Yeah. So it just shows you the importance of being in the word. Yeah, and I and memorizing scripture. I, I yeah. I'm a few years ago, uh maybe like nine years ago at this point, whenever I was studying with Philip, he he we were going through discipleship essentials. That was the first ever like Bible study I ever did as an adult. And, um, I was really thankful to have him walk me through it. And of course, in, in each chapter, there's a memory verse and he took that seriously. So if, if you showed up to Panera Thursday morning at six o'clock and you didn't have it memorized, he wouldn't like bash you or anything like that. But it was like, Hey man, do better next week. Yeah. No. And that, but, and so the, the memorizing scripture is, that's something that's become really important to me for that reason. When someone comes and talks to you or, or if, if me and Kyle have talked about this before on here, opportunities to share the gospel present themselves all the time. Oppor opportunities to connect scripture to a conversation are all over the place. But if you don't have the scripture in you, you're not going gonna to miss them. But the more scripture you have in you, the easier it is just to pull it out of your back pocket. And you don't even have to say, oh, well, and... John three, it says this, 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 that you just, you just say it as if it's a fact and, and because it is a fact and, and yeah. And, yeah. and some people are going to be like, man, Pierce has some wisdom. It's like, well, wisdom. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just copying here. I'm <laughs> just plagiarizing the Bible here. No, I know, but it's, yeah. it's so true. Mm -hmm. And the, the book that Pierce is referencing is Dis discipleship essentials is a study book that we do on Wednesday nights. Yeah. And I don't know about your tables, but my tables, other tables I've visited, it's the least emphasized part yeah. of that whole study. Me too. In fact, I kind of, so I kind of, you and I kind of lead our tables and, and I dropped the ball a little bit. So in, in the beginning, the first, I'd say the first four chapters, four studies that we did, I would ask, well, I remember the first night we got into the book I said there's I kind of walked through the sections of the book and said this is kind of how how the structure of it works and whenever I got to the memory section I said there's a memory verse each week that's very closely related to the study so memorize it try to memorize it and we'll come here and we'll we'll see who can recite it nobody did it ever and I I, I still had these a lot of these memorized um, because Philip really did put so much emphasis on it and i I really tried to memorize them and they actually stuck. So a lot of, especially like the first half, the memory verse is still there. I've still got them. And I've been using this app called, uh, used to be called scripture typer. Now it's called Bible memory. Um, really great app. I've recommended it a lot where you, you have, you plug in the verse, 
and to memorize it, you type in the first letter of each word just to quick. You're not typing mm-hmm. out the whole thing. Right. Type in the first letter of each word. And it to begin with, it'll have every word up there. Do that a couple of times, and then it'll take out half the words, and then you can do that a couple of times, and then it takes out all of them, so you have to type it from memory. Once you type it from completely from memory once, then it's memorized, and then it'll have you review it. To begin with, it's every 24 hours. If you do it 100% every time, then it'll skip to every two days, and then maybe a week, and then once a month. But based on how well you remember it, it will adjust how often you need to review it. And so it kind of helps keep you sharp on them. And so I've, I've been using that since, you know, nine years ago when Philip and I went through that book originally. And so I've, a lot of those first ones I still had memorized. And so I didn't try to, and the, for the first four weeks, I'd say, Hey, did anybody do the memory verse? Anybody want to try to recite it? And I, I got you with it a couple of times. You did it whenever you'd not be at the same table. But you were the only one. Nobody else at my table, the, my regular table, would ever do it. And I didn't want to, I felt like it was showing off yeah. to, like, nobody else memorized it. Here, watch me do it. And so I didn't recite them either. Maybe I should have to kind of encourage them. But anyway, um, so I kind of quit. I didn't even, I don't even bring it up anymore. I know. And and it's not you and me. It's some people don't even reference it. Yeah. You know what I'm like? But. I mean, I'll be honest with you, full transparency here in the nest. Yeah. Um, <laughs> those memory verses, a lot of those, I learned when I was 12 years old, mm-hmm. 10 years old. Yeah. And it wasn't because, hey, Brent took the first 30 minutes of his study time to memorize that, to recite at his table. My mother or grandmother or someone within my fellowship when I was a kid they were intentional with me learning that. Yeah. So I haven't learned very many. Now I have simply because I've starting, I'm starting to learn that that's my calm. That's, that's my weapon. That's my weapon mm-hmm. in this battlefield. And, um, but you know, when I was little, there was a, about a 75 yard stretch between our house growing up and my grandparents' house, right? Mm-hmm. And it was it was cleared, but it wasn't completely. <laughs> so we had a trail, right? <laughs> um, and my parents weren't the parents that like, and they're great parents, don't mm-hmm. get me wrong, but they didn't pull into grandma's house and grandpa's house and say, hey, we're here. We, we love you. Come get in the <laughs> car. Let me know. Like, they hit the horn on the way by <laughs> yeah. and it was our job to be there before they got in the house yeah. just so there was no delay. So we knew, knew an estimated time, honk, honk. Okay. We got to go. Well, dude, it was dark mm-hmm. sometimes. Yeah. And I'm three years older than my brother. So I was like, well, as long as I can outrun him. <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah. You don't have to outrun the bear. You just got to outrun the guy you're with. <laughs> but, but during that, it felt like your legs never, your feet never touched the ground. You're just floating, yeah. you know? And I, I learned at that age, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil for thou art with me. <laughs> they covered me. But the reason I did was because, I, and Pierce at 46 years old, Mm-hmm. I hit that verse on occasion. Yeah. I just do. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's, it's my weapon. Yeah. One of the weapons. Yeah. When you, I mean, when you look at Jesus and the temptation, Satan came and tempt, G, tempted Jesus with the word, misquoting the word right. or, or misrepresenting the word. And Jesus fired back with the word every single time. He shows us how to handle temptation. Yeah. And he shows us how to do that spiritual warfare. It's with the word. I mean, yeah. it's always with the word. Yeah. And he's a liar. Satan, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah not Satan. Jesus. Satan. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Satan. Satan is oh, a liar. Man. But anyways, what else you got? Man, so I, I, I wrote this note down. I don't remember what the context was. I remember the story. It's the story of the scorpion and the frog. By the way, how say say the first animal that I just said. Scorpion. Scorpion. My entire life I said scorpion. <laughs> I thought it was scorpion until I saw it written out and it's scorpion. But anyway, so the, the story of the scorpion and the frog, I don't remember the context of where I heard this. Um, 
or what point I wanted to make, but I'll, I'll share the story with you. All right. So the story of the scorpion and the frog. So there's, there's this river, and the scorpion needs to get to the other side, and there's this frog who's about to cross. So the scorpion goes up to the frog, and he says, hey, can I ride on your back across the river so that I can get to the other side? And the frog says, no, you're going to sting me. And he says, no, if I sting you, we'll both drown. I'll, I'll die too. Why would I sting you? Why would I do that? So the frog's, mm, I don't know, this guy's shady. But eventually the scorpion convinces him, and he's like, all right, hop on. And so he starts to cross the river. Well, they get halfway across, and the scorpion stings the frog. And the frog, and they both begin to drown. And as, they're, as their heads are about to go underwater, the frog says, why? Why'd you do it? And the scorpion says, it's in my nature. Mm -hmm. So I think I remember the context now. It's Satan, by crucifying Jesus on the cross, course he didn't do it himself but right. he presented the opportunity yeah it was it was his plan the whole time well it was ultimately god's plan but it was it was satan's plan to kill jesus in fact we even saw that in the temptation throw yourself off of this but by stinging i mean by by well by stinging the frog so to speak by by killing jesus on the cross he thought he had victory but ultimately he he played himself. He Congra lost. Congratulations, you played yourself. <laughs> Congratulations, you played yourself. He he killed himself, yeah. and he was he the serp the head of the serpent was crushed. And it's like it's just it's in my nature. It's in his nature. Yeah, it's yeah. in nature. Mm -hmm. I've heard you guys speak of that before on yeah. here, but I don't think, and I've heard that story, and I, I like it, but I don't think I've ever <clears throat> put that together. I don't think I've ever thought of that in a bit. I mean, you, you think of it in right and wrong and who do you yeah. trust and things like that. But that's a great example of that. Yeah, and I don't remember. I don't think that was the original context that I heard it in. I don't remember. But it's, it's such a, you know, the mind is a battlefield. Mm -hmm. And I heard something this week. Let's hear it. Um If you get good at thinking bad, mm. you're gonna you're gonna have plenty of opportunities yeah. to think bad. So how are you training your mind? Exactly. And um whoever we agree with is gonna win out mm -hmm. in our thinking. Yeah. And one of the things we talked about in that we we didn't, but the main thing that my grandmother joanna in that interview what was the one thing do you remember what she kept referencing she always said if is it the the quote if yeah. you look for the good in people you'll see good and if you look for the bad in people you'll see yeah. you'll find it even in your day mm, if you yeah. look for the good in your day mm -hmm. you'll see it yeah but if you look for the bad you'll see that you'll too. find it yeah yeah so you had mentioned something about joy mm, mm -hmm. and and that's where I just was kind of studying that out. But that negative thoughts, you know. Yeah, and, and there's a uh, a common theme on the on the podcast here is Kai will say something and I'll think of a song that's on the Rhymes of the Remnant, the the, uh, the playlist that I'm yeah, I'll creating spot over on time Spotify. on Spotify. Yeah. And you said um, basically... If you if you consume negative all the time, that's what will come out. And you can what you the way you phrase that you can if you get good at thinking bad. So a song on on the podcast, I mean on the playlist is called um, "Do You" by Brian T. And the it starts out with you don't pray the way you're supposed to pray, do you? You don't. Uh, I can't remember exactly how it goes, but it's calling you out. It's calling everybody out for right. for. Um, Thinking the way you shouldn't, speaking the way you shouldn't, and not studying the word and, and communing with God like you should. But one of the lines that he says is, uh, you got good at hiding things that make you look bad. And that, I just kind of connected that with, if you get good at thinking bad, where it's, because mm -hmm. we can get to that point, and, and I've been guilty of this over the years, where you, you kind of fall into one of those seasons of, one of Solomon's seasons, so to speak, where you just like, I'm going to I'm going to just indulge in in this sin here. 
But if you're consistent in church while you go through one of those seasons, unfortunately, you can develop a good skill of hiding that, of of putting on this facade. and, and uh, That's where the word hypocrite. Yeah, exactly. That's what that reminds me of. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And Jesus, he's pretty pretty plain. He's pretty bold with the way he speaks of hypocrites. It's scary. Mm-hmm. No, it really is. It drives me. Yeah. It, it um, my wife coined the term, and for 2023, I don't know, I keep, keeps coming to my brain. But two things that have stood out to me is joy and don't be a cranky Christian. Don't be a cranky Christian, yeah. I've never heard that. That's good. And I grew up Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, church. Mm Mm-hmm. Small church, small town. You get in that, you get in that, um, rhythm or rut. Oh, yeah. (laughs) You know, Mm. and then, um, and she wasn't, she wasn't Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. She knew, she knew church and she'd been to church. She knew, but I've had to be careful about, not being a cranky Christian. Mm. You have to show joy. You can't be. So that has challenged me for this year. Mm-hmm. And um, and I don't know what, the mind being a battlefield, things that we had talked about. Um, you brought up something, consistency. Mm. And I'll, I'll add to it, moderation. Yeah. Right? Consistency, you have to be consistent at anything to be, I don't know, have any positivity or traction or growth yeah growth Mm -hmm. but when you mess up we have to mess up in moderation (laughs) it can't be a like you said you you can't stay in that Mm -hmm. season we're all gonna have a season yeah we have to give ourselves grace enough to know okay i'm not perfect it's i'm man i'm struggling right now Mm -hmm. but it's the consistency of staying in the word using scripture and trying to think positive. Yeah. Because it's odd that there's a story that stays in my mind. It's odd because it's a, there's scripture that's, that supports it. You can even find it in there. And the bad part is I know it as a Cherokee, <laughs> as a Cherokee and, and I'm Choctaw and I, I just want to change it. Like here's a Choctaw wise tale. So it's, you know, you have two wolves inside of you, and I know you've probably heard me say this before, yeah. but, and they're fighting, mm-hmm. and they're going at it every day, and you're going along your day, and one wolf comes out, the other wolf comes out sometimes, but at the end of the day, one's wanting you to do good, one's wanting you to do bad, and then little <clears throat> kid says, well, who wins? So, well, the one you feed the most. Yeah, that's good. And that, I believe, is ultimately what comes out in the end. Mm -hmm. Are you feeding it? Are you training your mind to think negative? Because you can get that quench, too. Oh, yeah. Like, Mm -hmm. oh, good. Man, I didn't know if I had anything to gripe about today. (laughs) But here I is. I had this flat. So, now I can harp on that for the next three days. So, next time I talk to somebody, I'll be like, you aren't going to believe this. (laughs) I yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. you know, but thankfully, I was brought up in scripture, and I know my my mom was a positive influence in my life, and still is. And I had to read books. Mm. John Maxwell, how boring is that, dude? I didn't start enjoying reading until like a year ago. I I'm still trying to get there, <laughs> but when I when I was young younger it was like oh, zig ziglar mm. if i have to hear another one of this guys well it started gaining traction apparently mm. and without me quoting the stuff i start i, I recognize myself thinking it so then that led into okay those were men mm. so where is this well they're getting everything out of proverbs man <laughs> or they're yeah. getting everything you know it's all in here yeah so 
anyways, it was just interesting. I was, I was being fed mm -hmm. in a positive light mm -hmm. and without knowing it. And as a cranky Christian, as a teenager and a lot of my adult life, I started trying to focus on more on the good. Yeah. I'm not great at it. Mm -hmm. You can ask my family. I can promise <laughs> you they will tell you that. Um, but I've had a couple things happen in the past couple months that I've just been so thankful for. And I've, and I've chosen to see the good in it. I don't do it every time, Pierce. Yeah. But I'm just going to highlight a couple things. I had a, it was a rainy morning. Do you ever carry cash? Are you a cash? Almost, almost never. Okay, me neither. Mm -hmm. So it was a rainy morning, and I had taken the kids to school, mm -hmm. and I was coming back, and I see my low pressure yeah. on my thankful, – thankful for that. Number one <laughs> yeah. is I have that. Yeah. So I see it ding and start to go down like two pounds every 10 seconds. Oh, man. Like, so oh, you man. just hit a nail. I, I did, and I got to get somewhere. Mm -hmm. It's raining. And to the right, I look, and there's this small tire station. Where you at? I am at, I'm in Fort Smith, and I'm on Fresno. I'm facing Ramsey. Okay. Yeah, all right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Fresno and Jenny Lynn. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, you tell. know that little tire store, right? Yeah. Never been there. Mm -hmm. It's raining, and I'm losing two pounds every other second. I hit the right. The guy just pulls in. I pull in under the canopy because yeah. it's raining. Yeah. <laughs> I get out. He's like, yeah, man, let me, he had just gotten there. Let me get started, get everything going. I had 10 bucks. Oh yeah. He charged me 10 bucks. Nice. And I was so thankful because I had just went, you know, I had traveled 20 miles. Mm -hmm. I got back and that happened right there. Mm -hmm. I was thankful for my flat tire that morning. Yeah. Because it, the way it happened, mm -hmm. I wasn't thankful for a flat tire. Don't get me wrong. For the situation, for the for. But I had cat. I I consider that favor. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I I'm gonna look at it that way. Mm -hmm. And and then um. Yesterday, oh Friday, my battery had been losing a little bit of turnover. Mm. I'm like, hmm, I, when's the last time I put a battery in this truck? You know, <laughs> I got to thinking it was old. Yeah. This was all happening throughout the week. Tuesday, a little bit harder turnover. Wednesday. So then, you know, I start paying attention to it. Yeah. And I hear the Holy Spirit say, hey, hey, man, <laughs> might ought to get this looked at. So Thursday, the last turnover possible. Wonk, wonk. <laughs> oh, look, just get it. And it turned over. Yeah. And then I start losing like memory of my radio mm. station. I'm like, oh, I got to get. Th so I drive directly to the auto parts store and they put a battery in it. Pierce, I, I wasn't stranded anywhere. Yeah. I, I had a dead battery and I had a flat tire all within the past six weeks. Mm -hmm. Both times I didn't get stranded. Both times I was within. You You're know, right there. I was right there, yeah. and I'm so thankful for mm -hmm. that. And um, so that gave me opportunities, and I feel like if we're looking for those types of blessings or we're looking for those types of that type of favor in our lives, we have to be willing to talk about it, mm -hmm. and we have to be willing to give God the glory. Right. And we have to be willing to let him shine through that because that wasn't me, uh, and it wasn't anything I did. It was all happen it's I, I don't want to say happenstance but it's just a blessing yeah i mean i've been i've been kind of convicted over the past year or so like anytime like oh that was lucky <laughs> i like know it. we have to untrain yeah. ourselves of that so something you mentioned earlier made me think of just going through the motions like in one of those seasons and I've had this discussion with a couple of people what do you think about just going through the motions when it's one of those seasons where it's like i don't feel like picking up my Bible. I don't <laughs> feel like praying. I don't want to do any of this. And you get to the point where you just, you're not dedicating any time to God, period. What do you think about just going through the motions? A lot of people say, man, you, you shouldn't just go through the motions. You got to, you got to actually like mean it. What do you think about going through the motions? I think we do it all the time. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, and there's been a consistent message 
from you and Dr. Jarnigan in our fellowship about um, getting in uncomfortable situations. Mm. Like you said, seasons of going through the motions and things like that. And I think that's where Cranky Christian comes from. I mm-hmm. think that's where he's just like, we're doing this because we have to. Mm-hmm. We're, we're going through, we're going, church, church is a religious duty. No, oh, yeah. That's something that I'd written down this week. I was like, look, I don't want church to become a religious duty. Mm-hmm. So I feel like we have to stay consistent. We have to do things in moderation, but we also can't get comfortable. I think that's the comfortability. So where can I get better at something? Mm-hmm. Man, because there you challenge yourself <laughs> that. Yeah. Buddy, you write it all down. So right now, if you're going through a, a season to where, man, this, what is, this is blah. This is bland. Yeah. Well, what can I try to get better at right now? Mm-hmm. And um, like right now in my life, if you ask me that question, my self-discipline is struggling right now in food choices. Mm. I am not making great diet decisions. Yeah. Well, I go to church, check, right? My schedule is allowed for that. Mm-hmm. And I'm exercising. Like, I'm getting... I'm getting some working out in CrossFit. Shout out CrossFit. <laughs> it's a cult. <laughs> Lee, Lee Baldigo has been going and he yeah. looks at me. Oh, man, I'm so thankful because there's an accountability partner. Yeah, there. absolutely. And uh, he I looks like, at. I like Lee. He's a cool guy. Man, he really is. Mm. Yeah, uh, and I'm thankful he comes here to the fellowship, too. Yeah. I mean, him and Stacy and their family. And. He looks at me every day. We're laying on the floor after it's over with. And you're like, man, cheated death one more day. Yeah. But he says, this is a pyramid scheme. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear his voice saying yeah. it too. Because you look at the workout, it looks so easy. It's like, yeah. I can do anything in 15 minutes. Yeah. Man, those last five minutes, you're trying to live. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I believe it. But, so I've got that down, right? Well, why am I still feeling a little blah why am i why am i not losing why am i not at my optimum performance you know weight yeah and i don't mean that as like i got to go out and do these things but man you, if you want to be around for your children mm-hmm. if you want to help leave the legacy of spirituality to your family you need to be healthy and they need to yeah. see you i think there's a direct link between being physically healthy and and how that affects your spiritual walk and just kind of your mental uh, I, health. I agree, but you can't out you can't outwork a bad diet. That's true. I, I can't. Yeah. Some people yeah. are genetically yeah. <laughs> gifted, mm-hmm. but so that's where I'm struggling right now. So to answer your question, long and short, I have to pick on myself. Mm. It's a curse, but it's also can be helpful mm-hmm. if you're focusing on the negative but you try to turn it into a positive so right now that's where i'm struggling man and i I, there's times that i've been great at it but right now i'm not so for me that's how i can break up the monotony Mm -hmm. is i like eating what i want to eat oh yeah yeah i I can afford it Mm -hmm. let's so and i can go good all day I can blow it up at 10 p.m. <laughs> yeah. Ruin it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so that's my answer to that is um, find something you can get better at. Mm-hmm. And then that way, maybe I can say, thank you, Lord, for the self discipline. Yeah. Like I may have it in a couple areas, but I promise you, I don't have it in that right now. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. And, and so for me right now, it'd be prayer. There's been times in my life where I even in my closet so my closet is it's got the two double doors that fold and open like this and um there's about two a foot and a half or two feet of wall that goes back like in that corners in on both sides so you open the doors but you still have like an extra two feet on both sides of of extra space so in my closet i took out everything of one side and i i went to a antique store and got like this little footstool and I stuck it in there, and I've got, you know, those Mexican blankets? You know what I'm talking about? Hispanic. Like, Hispanic. They're Mexican. <laughs> They're from Mexico. Right. But I got one of those Mexican blankets, and I threw, threw it over that. 
And then I even went to Home Depot and got one of those like knee pads that you use for gardening. So you're set up. And I stuck yeah, so I like I built this little private prayer closet thing in there. I probably built that like a year and a half ago. I used it pretty consistently for the first four months. Pretty off and on, like maybe three, four times a week for the next three or four months. And then I just kinda it just kinda fell off. Like I haven't I haven't hardly used it. So there's been a time in my life where I've been really, really consistent in prayer and and not just study or or just kind of general devotion, but specifically prayer. Going in there, sometimes it's dark in there, but sometimes I'll bring my phone and just like I'll put on Do Not Disturb, open it up to Psalms or something like that and just kind of pray through the Word, have the Word in there with me. But right now I'm in a, I'm in a time where like I just don't do that. I, I just I'm I've completely gotten out of the habit and I just don't do that. And I've done it a couple of times because I feel convicted. And man, it's just like whenever I was like 14, 15, uh, my, whenever I was a maybe 12 or 13, my dad got me a a like a like a young man's study Bible. So it's got little notes in there and stuff like that. And I've looked back through it and man, it's so cheesy. But it, it, but at the time it was so helpful. Well, for a long time, for years that thing, I would have it sitting out on my desk. It's like I never put it up. I never put it away in a drawer or anything like that. It was always sitting out on my desk, but it stayed there, collected dust. And every once in a while, I'd look at it. And I was not a practicing Christian at this time. And every once in a while, I'd look at it, and I'd feel convicted, and I'd usually open up to Proverbs. I'd read a chapter or two of Proverbs. And it it was like cold water on a hot day every time I do that, but I do it like once every two months. And so that's kind of, I've gotten that same rhythm now with prayer, specifically with prayer. So a flip side of the coin with going through the motions, because Philip and I talked about this very thing nine years ago when we were going through that book. And he said, sometimes going through the motions is the better option. If the two options are keep going through the motions with no emotion, with no feeling versus not doing it at all. The better option is to go through the motions, keep going through it. Even though you don't feel anything, it doesn't feel like you're making any progress. You're not getting anything out of it. Keep going through the motion. Stay stay consistent. Stay exactly. That's what he was saying. And, um, so that's, that's kind of where I'm at with going through the motions. There's, uh, there's two ways to look at it. It's not one or the other. It's both. Uh, but that's kind of how I see going through the motions how, in the way that I see it is when I get to the point of am I just going through the motions, it's the better option between the two because the other option is don't do anything at all. Um, so that's, I don't know, I just kind of No, that's good. That. It's two things I woke up with this morning when I headed this day and I looked at looked at everything as um, consistency mm-hmm. and uh, moderation. Yeah. I, Joy comes from mixing in things like that. Um, happiness is emotions, yeah, right. But joy is finding small things mm-hmm. to enjoy throughout the day, yeah. Um, and don't let people dictate your time. Mm. Yeah, that's a L- good one. It, that's something that you have to you have to do a reset every now and then, and mm-hmm. that reset may be in that closet, mm-hmm. or that reset may not be in the closet, but what does Pearson want to do for 30 minutes on a Sunday night before this hamster wheel yeah. gets back on? Most of the time I'm editing a podcast that I've put right. off all weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I understand. Because <laughs> we were doing things we wanted to do all day. Exactly, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Man, I don't know how many times I've I've uh, been uploading the file to YouTube or to, or to Spotify at like midnight, and it's like... Man, I got to sit here for the next forty-five minutes while it processes before I can actually close it down. But yeah, procrastination. I love what I love what you, you said. The story that you you just spoke of because the the consistency of going through the motions. If you're not in position to capitalize on an opportunity, mm-hmm. you'll never capitalize. Right. So be ready, mm-hmm. just in case that happens. Because if you go way off your normal schedule or way up. So if you're going to run a marathon, Mm -hmm. you need to train for it. Yeah. All right. I don't always get asked to play softball and I'm too old to, but when you do, you crush it. 
<laughs> no, not really. That reminds me of a point I wanted to ask you. Keep going, and I'll but, come. But I have to stay in shape, like someone's going to ask me to play a tournament next yeah. weekend. Okay, I got you. And if I don't, you know, that's why I was struggling with the diet. I'm like, man, if I'm not in good shape, and I'm not ready to go play seven games, they're going to stop asking me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fleshly and it's worldly, but we have to train for it, like a marathon, just like being ready for Christ to come back. Mm hmm right? Mm -hmm. We got to be ready. Well, yeah. And even, even being ready for the warfare that comes up for the spiritual warfare, being ready for somebody who's got a question for you. Somebody walks up to you today, or you, let's say you go grocery shopping today, this afternoon and I probably will. And for some reason, some guy walks up to you and he's like, Hey, why do you believe in Jesus? Da -da, da -da, da -da. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, you got to have something ready. And and I think it needs to be short in those situations. It, yeah. Um, brother Alan Holmes was mm -hmm. in our was in my group Wednesday night, and he does a thing at the fair. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he's a bulldog, man. He's not scared of anybody. Oh yeah. You guys have mentioned. I've, I've been there once with him. Yeah. And he has. And what he says, you got to keep it short, mm -hmm. and you got to be prepared. So you have your go tos. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if I could point to one simple one simple phrase or one simple thing other than well i can feel god i can see god every day mm -hmm. and other than he makes me happy is i want to be with him in heaven oh, yeah. that's all i got yeah there's no scripture to that so that's where i need to add to that there are scriptures to back that back all that up though but i need to have it here and yep. it needs to be here mm -hmm. kind of like if someone says hey I need you to go play. Well, I got to be out there and do a backhand mm -hmm. or turn double play or be able to get on base. Because yeah. if I haven't kept myself ready, mm -hmm. it's just like getting ready for heaven. So I've got a good story about the time I went out with Alan to the fair. So Alan, he goes out to the fair and, and he, he's got a table. And luckily it was inside because last year was hot. I'm sure it was hot this oh, year. Man, but yeah. So he's got this, this table and he's got like some waters and snacks and things like that that he gives away for free. And as people walk by, he just kind of asks them, hey, do you go to church anywhere? And he talks to them about, about God. So there was this couple walking by. They're probably, uh, I don't know, early 50s. And they, they start walking by, and Alan's like, hey, you guys want a water? It's free. You know, it's like $2 over there, but I got it for free. And, and so uh, I think the guy comes up and grabs a couple of waters. And, so that's his hook. Yeah, exactly. And Alan starts to talk to him, and he's like, hey, man, do you go to church anywhere? And, and the guy gives that answer no, that's like, I know, no, I don't go to church anywhere. I know where this is going and I'm not interested. He, he, <laughs> Just boom. Yeah. He's like, he's like, no, I don't, I don't. Thanks to, for the water. I don't go to church anywhere. <laughs> and, uh, so Alan, he keeps talking to him and the guy stops and talks. Well, this guy, it turns out he's an atheist or, or at least a, a, he thinks he is a doubting yeah. agnostic. He's like on the, ver in between the two. And uh, so Alan's talking to him, and I'm kind of just standing back, letting Alan do his thing. And this guy is like really smart, and he he's one of those guys that uh, I believe in science. If you mm. can't see it, if you can't test it, you know, if it's not observable, that kind of thing. But the dude is smart. It's not just yeah, it's, it's not tough. like it's not like he he heard oh that's an argument that you can use. Yeah, I'll just use that one. I believe in science. He and knew not, his stuff. He knew his stuff. And so Alan, he's kind of struggling a little bit. And so I try to, I'll hop in and try to help out a little bit here. Let's tag team this thing. And so the conversation goes on for, I don't know, six or seven minutes. And this guy is smart. He's, he's, he's not budging. And Alan can kind of see that this, I'm not, I'm not, we're not getting anywhere with right. this thing. And so Alan's like, well, you know, I don't, Hey, I don't want us to get into an argument. I just, I like talking about this kind of stuff, uh, but I don't want to offend you or anything like that. I appreciate you hearing me out. And, you know, I hope, well, his wife has been standing maybe two feet behind him the whole time, like off to the side, just kind of listening, watching and listening. <clears throat> and when Alan says, you know, I don't, I don't want to offend you or anything. I don't, I just like, she, she steps in and she goes, oh no, no, no. I'm a Christian. We have these conversations all the time. You're not going to offend him. Keep on going. Oh, no. <laughs> so, oh. so me and Alan are kind of like, uh -oh. oh, I'm, out of, con I'm <laughs> out of content. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's like, I, I'm out of ammo. That's all I got. <laughs> no, really, man. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
but that's encouraging a, though yeah yeah and so it went on for a couple more minutes and he was really nice he was everybody was respectful it was a good conversation it, but uh, but yeah, I just thought that was funny how his wife was like, "No, no, keep going. You're you're, you're doing great. <laughs> That's awesome. That's all. Can you imagine uh, though? Can you imagine? I was thinking about this this weekend. Mm -hmm. So you you aren't married, mm -mm. and I'm sure that's part of your prayer life. Mm. And I'm sure other people are praying for that. But can you imagine living in a household, mm. raising children? Just like last night, I was reading to the boys, and I was talking about air and God and things like that. And I'm like, I am so thankful that my spouse mm -hmm. is on the same page with yeah. this. How I don't, I don't know how difficult that would be, but I can imagine. I don't know if I could run that race. Yeah, I don't, and I mean, we're commanded not to command if. Unfortunately, if you get into a situation like you get married before you're a believer and then you become a believer, then it's kind of absolutely you're stuck, there, but, there you are. But um, but we're I mean, we're commanded if we're a believer not to put ourselves in that situation. You know? But just like that guy's spouse. Yeah. Well, yeah. She ain't quitting. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. Neither yeah. should we. Right. If we are in that situation mm -hmm. and oh, so, so many people are. Yeah. But don't be discouraged. I lived it. My my grandfather didn't go to church all with us growing up really and then when i say growing up guys i'm talking like in high school in mm -hmm. school yeah and then i left at 19 so that was growing up to me yeah. and um my dad did and a sunday was his day to chill man yeah. he was either fishing or watching fishing or something right so i got to see that and that gives me a huge amount of respect for the people that do it it doesn't just have to be the wife that does it right you know, husbands do it, things like that. I had a Sunday school teacher that said, man, your Uncle Jeff, like, that's pretty impressive. He's a young man, and Jeff, my Uncle Jeff, he comes to church here, Jeff yeah. and Robbie. Mm -hmm. And he didn't get married till he was later in life, till he was older in life. And um, he came, single guy, he mm -hmm. came to church. Mm -hmm. And one of my Sunday school teachers is male, and he's like, man, that's impressive. Like, I don't know if I'd come to church my wife didn't make me. I'm your like, Sunday school teacher said that. Yeah, wow, so it stuck. Wild. Man. But he was telling me that because he was complimenting yeah. Jeff for coming. He wasn't saying, hey, man, have this mindset. Yeah. <laughs> but I heard it. Yeah. 40, 38 years later, I remember it. Yeah. You know, yeah. so. So to, to close up here, I got a question for you. Okay. I, I talked about this a few episodes back. But I got to ask. How'd you get so good at basketball? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not good at basketball. Man, we played uh, around the world after it, Wednesday night church one time, and you were sinking them. Yeah. Where's, where did that come from? Oh, my gosh. Honestly, it is going to... That's what we did yeah. growing up. Mm -hmm. That I had a group of friends, and I'm so thankful. And they were such a blessing that we tried to fit in as many outside sports sporting games mm -hmm. in a day as possible if you could ask me at four, 13 years old 14 12 what's your optimum saturday mm. well we're gonna start out with some wiffle ball nice then we're gonna graduate after a little couple hours of that we're gonna graduate to basketball and we had a night not had to get it to where we could dunk it right oh, okay. so we had the slam dunk go you yeah. know you lower it mm -hmm. so we we played that for a couple hours Wathena would cook grilled cheese sandwiches oh, wow. with tomato soup God and we'd her. devour about a hundred of those <laughs> stay on the porch don't come in the house because we're filthy nasty yeah. sweaty yeah picture of kool-aid you know i'm setting the scene yeah, here. Yeah. i mean it was legit and then we went to football. And the reason we had to play football last. You get mad? That. And we would be out of clothing. But we would have ripped our shirts off because of the. We played tackle too long. You mm -hmm. know. Then we finally went to pass and stop. But. We played outside. And we. I shot. Basket. Yeah. After basket. After basket. Because. We couldn't be in the house a lot. Just. That's just how my parents were and my friend's parents were mm -hmm. and get out there and do something and, and i'm thankful for it and um 
So that's why. And I'm yes. not great at it. Hey, dude, you are. You but you get me on an eight foot goal or whatever. Yeah. There's no, like I, you know, I played a lot around. And my dad played with me, man. Yeah. When I was a kid, my dad played with me, and um, we didn't just go one on one and bang it out. But we played around the world. Yeah. And that's where that's where it comes from. And right. and I think and I credit it to the practice, just like what you said of going through the motions. Mm-hmm. Like there were hours of me, the dirt court, the ball, and the goal. Yeah. That's it. I was going through the motions. Yeah. Well, and and that, was, that's what it made me think of consistency. I was you're, going through the motions. Yeah, you're consistent in it. And even after the time has passed, you still have got that. Muscle memory. Yeah, I probably haven't shot. I hadn't shot in a long time, but it was fun. But you know what? I never thought we were playing basketball. I thought we were talking. I just thought we were hanging out. Yeah, we were doing both. Yeah, it was was good though. It was fun. (laughs) As a vain person, that was cool to hear. Well, man, thanks for pondering the pages with me for a while and hanging out on the on the porch. Thanks for asking me. Yeah. Sorry if I rambled. No, man, this was great. You did better than Kyle. Oh, no. <laughs> we got to get you back on here. So I had a joke that I was going to say at the beginning, specifically for Kyle's sake, so that he would laugh whenever he saw it. But I didn't want to I didn't want to kill the mood. But I'll, I'll tell the joke now that it's over. <laughs> okay. And I might, put, I might plug it in at the beginning. I might, like, clip it and plug it in at the beginning. But, hey, guys, welcome to Pondering the Pages. Today we have a very special guest. Everybody, welcome to the podcast. Eric Church. <laughs> hey, give him a hand. Give him a hand. <laughs> oh, man. Eric Church. Yes. Like Eric Church. He changed shades on me. I went to a concert lately. Yeah. And I have to get some new shades. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, man, thanks for, thanks for hanging out for a while. It was fun. You're welcome. I appreciate you guys doing this. Yeah.